So I've got a pretty unique opportunity today, and that is that I have a second gen Colorado here in my driveway today. Up until now, I've never had the opportunity to have one of the new Colorados here in my driveway. Uh, beyond Miguel's uh, truck last year, we did the Relentless Fab bumpers. He doesn't do any sort of crazy off-roading or um, abuse with the truck, but he does have a camper trailer. He likes to take off uh, kind of dirt roads and camping a little bit farther out than uh, just your average campsite. He saw the article online a while back and just so happened that uh, I make parts for the Colorados and just so happens I have frame plates and a welder. Um, he wanted to make sure that when he's either camping or around town uh, doing his detailing business that he is not going to have to worry about his frames crumple zone prematurely actuating. Joe has let me borrow his truck for the day and we're gonna weld these on right now. Once you get the rear tire off, you're gonna to wanna to take this felt liner out of the wheel well. A couple T15 Torx around and uh, we might even need to uh, tear off the mud guard here. We'll see those are Phillips. Once I get this fender liner out, I'll be able to show you guys exactly where this plate goes and why this frame fails where it does. Dear GM, if you're gonna make four fasteners hold on one part, let's make sure the drive is actually the same. I got three T15s and one Phillips on the same mud flap. Come on, guys. I freaking love this tool. Be gentle with it. There we go. All right, this is what we're trying to fix. So this right here is your crumple zone, effectively. If you were to get an accident, the forces come here and hit this hole and the frame bends downward. Now, the same issue happens when you're overloaded or you have too much tongue weight or say you hit a bump while you're towing something or overlanding or camping or driving off road and maybe even at the mall, I don't know what you guys do. But if you're overloaded and you hit a bump too hard, that frame will flex and it can bend right at that point. So it is a safety feature in the way that it was designed, but I've got a feeling that they would have probably had the same effect maybe had they moved that point further back. Like I said, my buddy's got a full bed of detailing gear and tools and machines to do his work, as well as a 20 some odd foot camper that he likes to take um, a little bit off-road, kind of dirt roads and whatnot. And he wants the peace of mind to know that while he's towing, he doesn't bend his frame in half. We're going to add this plate here and kind of mitigate the crumple zone, um, but we're also strengthening the frame in a way more suited to the use case. You guys can see this plate encompasses the uh, shock mount right there. And it ties in all the way around that hole, the kidney there. And goes all the way back behind the bump pad, basically. I know I'm going to get the questions in the comments and I figured I'd answer it now. Yes, this brace plate will work with the 589 Motorsports shock relocation bracket. There is a chance, I've not measured it, not called them or anything, uh, but there's a chance that one, the hole that I've created for going around the tube here will actually kind of fit over it, but um, the strength is more so around that little kidney shaped, that little pill shaped hole. So you can cut the front ring off of the uh, plate here and it'll work just fine. He doesn't have the shock relocation, doesn't plan to. Um, it will not interfere with the shock relocation bracket even after. So um, it's kind of nice that we've designed parts for the trucks independently. And basically we're uh, making sure that you guys, the end user, don't have any sort of conflicting modifications or have to uh, worry about making sure that one fits and one doesn't. So 
Um, let's get this marked out so that we can kind of floppy disk the uh, paint and everything off of the frame and get this thing welded in. So get it centered up. Um, I've noticed on some of these trucks that I've seen pictures of this weld is kind of far. So when we do the flappy disc here, we'll just clean this up a little bit right here. But get it centered around the, uh, the circle over there. Get it lined up there and uh, trace it out. I like silver because I'm drawing on black uh, paint here. So it seems to be... Uh, a little more visible if my pen actually worked. We're just using this as a kind of a marker, so. Yeah, I need to get a black one because my pen's all jacked. Well, it was silver until it wouldn't. But at least we can see where it is. And uh, we'll get this uh, cleaned up and ready to weld here right now. It's a yes welder. Don't judge me. Right. Oh, I thought for sure this was gonna be a two day video. I uh, turned my gas on, there was no gas. Well, I was a good boy and I actually turned off my bottle and not just the regulator. So that crap Harbor Freight regulator tends to leak a little bit of gas over the time, over weeks and days and months and years. So, um, Let's get the welder set up and uh, we'll get to welding. I'll find a good ground spot here. I think right there's probably going to be okay. Back here by the back crumple zone, I guess. All right. Oops. Get the welder set up here to quarter inch. See where we're at there. Now, I'm no welder, but uh, we'll see how I do on this. And if it looks like garbage, I'll show you guys from 20 feet away. I think we're looking good. Get my uh, get my hood and we'll hold her up. It's almost like no matter how many times you pull the screw out there seems to be another one that just replaces it and in the same spot it feels like i felt like i took all these screws out twice all right here we go almost done so the two holes in the plate are for the e-brake uh, cable retention hanger basically so the one hole has provisions for the uh hanger itself and then the other one is so you can get your bolt back in so i think it's a 13 mil we'll pull that out and set this to the side and then when we're done we can install it right back where it was my trigger for some of you put a crumb socket on a impact gun so it's kind of cool about the driver's side here is you can actually use this bolt to uh help retain and locate your plate and guarantee that it won't go uh, in a location that you can't get that bolt threaded. So uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of room that I built into that, but otherwise it kind of fits where it fits. Also, since we're uh, welding right next to the gas tank, have one of these around within reach. So if you decide to, you know, explode the truck, you'll be 
30 feet away and this would be a lot closer to the fire so just be safe and sorry just in time it just started sprinkling rain so we'll get this dusted in some satin black here and it'll basically disappear maybe i get my ground strap out of the way plus well, so once we get the uh wheel liner back in here you won't see this at all almost looks factory so what's cool is your little bracket here that's right back in the factory hole on the bolt we drop and uh thread it back in there you go back to uh back to what it was so you don't even need a different bolt you just need the bolt that it came with the hole works just the same All right, we got the plates all welded up. Fender liners are back in, didn't lose any screws. Got the wheels all bolted back on. I do have to torque them real quick before I run it back down to his house. But otherwise, uh, got everything put back together. Everything went back just fine. Um, got everything painted up. Can't even tell it's anything's been done to it. Uh, when we do the lift here in about another month or two, um, he'll have a you know greater peace of mind knowing that the frame has more integrity and is stronger in the event of him towing his trailer or this you know thousand pounds of water and detailing gear in the back of his truck he won't have any issues uh, with the frame mending now especially at that little crumple zone so if you guys have any other questions about this or any other products we have feel free to comment below as well as if you guys have any other ideas for 700 uh, colorado canyon zr2 products um, let me know uh, if you guys want to follow along on the build vlog with my truck, I've got a 6 liter 40s, 6 speed, double O. Uh, it's going to be a pretty sick build, so wouldn't want you guys to miss out on that. But uh, at any rate, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.